Get in, loser, we're going machine learning again. With Falcon Northwest rack systems, but also a system that I built in a cooler master tower, but also taking a look at Supermicro, what they had in their ready-made workstations, because these are three very different solutions to three very different problems. Let's dive in and take a closer look. <laughs> Falcon Northwest has you covered if we're talking about the Windows ecosystem and basically any other scenario. I did a video last year with a Falcon Northwest system on an Intel CPU. And yes, that Intel CPU 56 cores, it has some accelerators. It has some unique features you can't get even with a 96 core Threadripper. But me, I need 96 cores. I can't, I can't live without 96 cores. And so that is our Falcon Northwest rack system. We're going to talk machine learning little bit of a continuation of the last video that I did with machine learning. Pure coincidence, but that was also with a Falcon Northwest system, an Intel-based Falcon Northwest system. That was Sapphire Rapids 56 cores. Well, we've moved up quite a ways with 96 cores in this platform, but we need to do something about the GPUs. RTX A6000, which A6000? RTX 5880, L40S, A800. So our Falcon Northwest rack system here is compact but extremely powerful. In fact, this is probably the limit of the typical North American breaker, like 20 amps. And that's not just because it's 96 cores. I mean, the 96 core, you know, you're still running in that 350 watt Threadripper power envelope, but the GPUs, the GPUs can be north of 300 watts each or, or just under 300 watts each, as the case may be. I've got our RTX 5880, and you may be thinking, wait a minute, that looks exactly the same as our A6000, looks exactly the same as our, uh, uh oh, yeah, A800, looks exactly the same as our A800. They do look really similar, don't they? The A800 doesn't feature any outputs, it's the big difference. But they're all 40 gigs, and they're all really similar horsepower. The ADA generation RTX A6000 is, of course, the fastest, but it's also in the highest demand and the most expensive. MSRP was supposed to be just over $6,000. Extreme demand has driven it over 10. The A800 and the RTX 5880 were meant to help alleviate some of the pressure, come in at less of a price point because you get the RTX A4000, which is, you know, in that $4,000 MSRP. These are supposed to be around $5,000, give or take. Both the A800 and the RTX 5880 do have a fan, so you can use it outside of a server type context. NVIDIA might have noticed people downloading the Level 1 Text blower adapter and putting them in the fractal cases, like the fractal uh, Meshify and the ones that have, you know, just tons and tons and tons of GPU clearance. I actually saw some of those on the floor at GTC. Remember GTC, NVIDIA's global technology conference that I went to last year? Yeah, Level 1 Text 3D printable blower shroud adapter thingies running on A100s there. You could just run an A800. Now, in terms of computational performance difference, yes, there is a computational performance difference between the RTX 5880 and the RTX 6000. As the name implies, well, the 5880 seems really close to 6000. It is, in fact, really close to 6000. If you look at the NVIDIA product pages and side-by-side -side them, you see that, you know, our single precision floating point performance, it's close. You know, you got like 20 trillion operations per second less. But these cars also use less power, which if you're going to put two or three of them in your chassis, makes a little bit more sense. Now, whereas our other machine learning video covered running the Windows subsystem for Linux, this one really is just kind of a continuation of that, but using Linux as the actual host operating system. Linux with a 96 core CPU plus these GPUs also opens up a new possibility. As we move into a world where CPUs have a lot of horsepower on them dedicated for AI or earmarked specifically for AI, uh, they've had to get creative because those are meant to save power. And so we end up with things like BFloat 16, which is mostly an 8-bit representation of 16-bit floating point values. And the way that they do that is they share the exponent component of that because floating point, you know, you have an exponent and a mantissa. Floating point storage is a whole other ball of wax in and of itself. Don't want to get 
too off track talking about that in this video. But the assumption is that for most of the AI training data, they're going to share the exponent. And so this is a data structure that actually ends up sharing the exponent. The CPU is much more amenable to uh, munging the data into that kind of a format. And so you can mix and match data sets that run on a GPU for data sets that will run a little bit better on a CPU toward building something that may run really well on hardware designed specifically for BFloat 16. For example, that's just a for instance, you could do lots of other things like run your own large language models and hundreds of tokens per second and everything else. The other thing that I wanted to take a look at was NVLink. So the A800 actually has NVLink connectors, meaning that you can chain these GPUs together and have, you know, 96 gigabytes of VRAM space since each card has 48. Our RTX 5880s, it only has the sync and the stereo connector. So if you are going to spread the load across multiple GPUs, you're not going to be able to do it through a bridge adapter, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't use both of them at the same time. PyTorch especially, but also a lot of the other machine learning libraries do actually support running the load spread across multiple GPUs. It's obviously a little bit better if your GPUs support the bridges and so you could run two GPUs and have the load spread that way. For the host operating system, I've already got a single slot A4000 in there. So I could run two A800s with the bridge and use this like an interactive workstation because my A800s don't have the physical connectors and are not actually managing, you know, the graphical environment. So let's get that put together. I just put in my new GPUs and it's getting a D4 and it won't post and I've ruined the system. Fear not, friends. This is why you watch level one techs. The Cooler Master half case is a great choice for these kinds of builds because it's got the dual 200 millimeter fans in the front. It's a little ginormous, like, but it is easy mode for building. And as this system boots, you get the white LED like you're about to see the BIOS screen, but you actually have postcode D4. It just gets stuck. And this is because when you clear CMOS, that it actually can't post with three GPUs that have 48 gigs of memory. BIOS defaults literally can't do it. Not a problem. You just got to take out your RTX 800s, which have our bridges installed, and then post. It's like, yeah, D4, white LED, and nothing. Not a big deal. Just pull the GPUs, configure the BIOS, and then we'll put the GPUs back. Not a problem. Now post. More like post-traumatic stress disorder, right? It's booting! 10-bit tag, above 4G decoding, PCIe AER support. Gotta make sure you get the BIOS settings. Boom! GPUs are back. Yeah, it's booting. <laughs> Asus, well, still probably in search of incredible. Especially after all this BIOS kerfuffle on both Team Red and Team Blue. Now, did I say that the AA100s have 48 gigs? I meant 40 gigs. They're a little bit less, 40 gigs. But, hey. So in this case, I have two terminal windows open, one with the Llama 3 70 billion parameter model and the other one with the Gemma 2 27 billion parameter model. And we can see that it is loading both GPU Zero, which is an A840 gigabyte, as well as our RTX A6000, which is the primary GPU. And so now with a couple of jobs running, we're getting a little bit of load distribution across all three of our GPUs. Now with the bridges on our A800s, we can more effectively use the 40 gigs of VRAM that is on each card. But effectively, we have a card that has 80 gigs of VRAM because that high-speed interface is a much faster interface than going through the system or falling back to system memory or falling back <laughs> or just crashing because there's not enough VRAM to run this type of thing. If you want to run a 130 billion parameter model, this type of bridging is a great way to do it. It's also nice to see that just tweaking a couple of settings in our BIOS is able to unlock this functionality for us. Three 40 gig VRAM, well, the one A6000 is 48 gigs in a single system and our this is a Threadripper Pro 3000 series CPU. What do you think I've made of Threadripper Pro CPUs? Only a little bit. Strictly speaking, the A800 and the RTX 5880 were created for a world market to avoid any kind of export restrictions or controls on shipping, but also to just alleviate the insane demand for GPUs because whenever you're selling something above MSRP, that's just more... <laughs> That's just more motivation for your competition to get their stuff put together and out the door. 
I'm also delighted because there is finally a BIOS update for Asus WRX90 motherboard. Yeah, the, the one I'm testing is in beta, but hey, I'll take it. We also saw a GTC Supermicro's AI machine learning systems. Those are maybe not a bad choice if you need to pack in a lot more GPUs. Supermicro has come up with a solution to have in-system liquid cooling to be able to run those hotter cards like an L40S and the RTX A6000s. You can have a four-way or even an eight-way bridge workstation. So if you need a quiet system at your desk, that can do AI and all of the other stuff, then definitely you should check that out. Now, one of the first things I like to do when I get a system up and running is to ask it to search for perfect numbers. I'm not gonna get into perfect numbers here. There's some amazing videos you can watch about perfect numbers, but it requires a lot of cross-domain knowledge in order to respond to basic requests about developing an algorithm like this. And so I've asked the system to come up with an algorithm to search for perfect numbers. and an odd perfect number probably doesn't exist, but that's actually not known, and that's a whole other interesting conversation. What is interesting here is about how the GPUs are loading. We're actually getting a little bit of play on our RTX A4000. I've loaded a 27 billion parameter model, Gamma 2, using Olama. This is a system configuration that would support multiple users running Olama with different models loaded at the same time. So I could build sort of a multi-user interactive box for a small work group or something like that with just two GPUs. Even with my queries, which are a relatively low number of tokens, it's generating a large number of tokens for the output. And I can ask it specifics like, hey, using your knowledge of this algorithm or writings about this, build the program that takes that into account. And it doesn't always do a great job coming up with an algorithm. There's, there's a fair bit of holes in the, in the code that it generates usually. But the fact that it's really only loading one of these GPUs and that the token output speed from this algorithm is as good as it is, is very encouraging to see. For this kind of an application, just sitting at the terminal, you really would be hard pressed to feel a difference between the RTX A6000 and an RTX 5880 because there's a lot that's lost due to the inefficiency of we're just figuring out this whole large language model thing. So you could get a lot done with a single 48 gig 5880, in other words. The other thing to really underscore here is that how easy this was. This is running totally locally, totally offline. We're not getting into any conversations about customizing the model or anything like that, but I'm able to run a model from Google, which is quite competent, entirely offline and locally on my workstation and at blazing fast speeds. Now there's tons of other models available on Olama and hugging face in general, and you can get out PyTorch and do a lot of that fun sort of development stuff. But that this is available and running on a box on my desk is very, very encouraging. Now, if you run dmessage to check messages from the kernels and you see messages like this where maybe one GPU is working or none of your GPUs are working or there's no output from NVIDIA SMI, that's just BIOS settings. You really do need 10-bit tag support and to enable some of the more advanced features in your BIOS. You want to be sure that above 4G decoding is enabled. You might not even be able to post until you turn on above 4G decoding. So try your system with a single GPU. Remember, one of the main draws of the NVIDIA developer ecosystem, the NVIDIA developer experience, is that it's plug and play. You just plug in your GPU and it just works. And certainly, Falcon Northwest and Supermicro can deliver that kind of an experience, but if you DIY it, nah, it's not quite that simple. You will have to tweak some settings. NVTOP stands for Neat Video Top. Although you posers, you said, oh, it's always stood for Neat Video Top. That is a lie. That is untrue. Tell me you're new here without telling me you're new here. It's neat video top. It used to be NVIDIA top. But it is really handy to see how your GPUs are doing, even the non-NVIDIA ones. Look at all that VRAM. I'm one of this level one. This has been a quick look at the RTX 5880 and the A800. And if you want to DIY that and add some, some GPUs to your configuration, you can totally do it. Oh, I forgot. If you want to do vGPU and pass through with these cards, you totally can do it, but you need to enable message signaled interrupts. There's a thread for that on the forum. One of our generous benefactors already ran into issues with running the RTX 6000 for GPU pass through, passing through the whole GPU. I'm not talking about splitting the GPU up for multiple VMs. I'm talking about just passing through the whole GPU. That is actually bugged for some reason on the ADA uh, RTX 6000, but not the Ampere RTX 6000. And it has to do with message signaled interrupts. So if you enable message signaled interrupts in your virtual machine before you install the drivers, it'll work. And then you'll be able to run a virtual machine passing through your RTX A6000.
with its 48 gigs of VRAM. Could you run Windows Subsystem for Linux in the Windows VM with the GPU? And the answer is yes, you totally can do that. And then it would dovetail with our other how-to pretty well. Now where we could go from here is full support with something like Docker or a containerization system. Um, Kubernetes and using labels to label this machine as having a GPU capability. That's another thing that we could do. What sort of content would you like to see in terms of setting this up and getting it running? Hit me up in the forums at Level 1 Techs. I'm signing out and I'll see you there. Might have to get your feet wet a little bit. Might have to come to the Level 1 Techs forums. It's cool. I'll help you. Plus also, what are you working on? Let's chat. Would you say this video was rack-tastic?